my previous velocity banking video, I teach you how to tell if velocity banking is going to be faster than the debt snowball, but I still keep getting case studies asking me to run the numbers for cars and mortgages. And I know why. It's because there's other channels that state over and over and over again that velocity banking is faster with cars and mortgages. It is true that velocity banking is faster than just paying the minimums, but velocity banking is not faster than the debt snowball in these situations. And my goal is to show you very clearly why. Instead of using VB, I'm going to show you how to maximize the return on the money that you use to pay off your house. I honestly haven't seen other YouTubers talking about this very much, but the money that you put toward your mortgage, it's not all equal and you'll understand in the case study. I have two case studies to illustrate this today, Francisco and Matt. Matt's case study is a perfect example for the cars because his only debt are his two cars and his mortgage, and he made a note specifically that he was interested in seeing Velocity Banking versus the debt snowball when it came to his cars. Matt has $500 in free cash flow each month, and he has a line of credit with a limit of $25,000 with a 12% interest rate. The big question is, should he take that $500 that he has each month and use the debt snowball strategy? So pay off card number two first and then card number one, or should he use velocity banking and use the chunking strategy because his line of credit isn't quite big enough to cover both cars. When it comes to cars and mortgages and really any debt, I really, really, really hate the chunking method. This is probably one of the most misunderstood things with velocity banking. I hate it. I mean, I really hate it. And these interest rates are pretty good. We've got 7.24% and 3.74%. Taking out debt at 12% interest to pay off lower interest debt, it just makes no sense, even with parking your paycheck and the whole thing. Here's the math. If Matt used his $500 of free cash flow and paid off car number two and then car number one, he would pay them both off in 25 months and he would only pay $2,200 of interest. And that's really not that much interest over two years. Years. And remember, Velocity Banking can only save us on the interest. It can't save us any more than the interest that we're paying because that would be the balance. So this is why Velocity Banking really only works with very high interest credit card debt. When we can consolidate high interest credit card debt and we can then trade those high interest rates for lower interest rates with a line of credit, that's when Velocity Banking works works really well. So here are the velocity banking options for Matt with his cars. And we know that the debt snowball paid off both cars in 25 months and we paid $2,200 in interest. So first I ran the numbers for chunking and I hate chunking for a reason because this is terrible and it's terrible because $12,000 applied to the higher interest debt doesn't get us back any minimum payments. We are just trading lower interest debt for higher interest debt, which is why it's going to take actually longer, 27 months, just us to pay off the line of credit and then we still have the other car loan too. So the chunking strategy doesn't work. It takes longer than the debt snowball. Next, let's run the numbers and use the 25k line of credit to pay off the larger car loan. So if we can absorb that entire loan, we get that minimum payment back. I know it's not quite $25,000. He would probably have to wait a couple months and then pay the whole thing off with the line of credit, but Let's just say, for the example, he's able to pay off that car loan. Again, in this example, we are trading lower interest debt for higher interest debt. Even with parking our paycheck, it doesn't matter. Months to pay off just this car is still 26 months, and we're not saving any interest either because we're still paying interest on the other car too. So this third option is hypothetical, and I still want to throw it in here so that you can see that there's absolutely no way that velocity banking will work in this situation. Let's say that Matt has a line of credit that's big enough to absorb both car loans. So now we get both of those minimum payments back as cash flow. When we apply that increased cash flow to the line of credit, it is still slower and more expensive than the debt snowball because of the higher interest rate. 26 months to pay off and nearly 26 $600 in interest paid. Any way you slice it, velocity banking is not going to be faster than the debt snowball when you're looking at car loans. It is faster than just paying the minimums, but why would you jump through all of these hoops just to pay more interest than the debt snowball? I've seen comments from people who argue for velocity banking in a situation like this, and they say having a line of credit is better because of the access to cash. Someone who's doing the debt snowball can also have an empty line of credit available to them and just not have a balance on it. 
The only way to beat the debt snowball when it comes to a car loan is to do what I showed you in this video here or get creative with 0% cards. Even the method that I walk you through in that video has so many caveats. You have to check the terms of your line of credit. If you use a credit card, then you have to be able to, to pay the car loan with a credit card. It gets very meticulous and then you still don't end up saving loads of money. Remember in Matt's example, we were only paying $2,200 in interest to begin with. Using 0% cards might save you some money, but there's just not enough being paid because the rates on these cars are so low, and that's a good thing. So Matt, it's just in your best interest to do the debt snowball for these. I wanna pause for a second and just say thank you so much to those of you that have engaged and shared and liked my videos recently. Last month, I had over a 1,000 video likes and over 200 video shares. Thank you so much for supporting me and continuing to like and share my videos. Hopefully that clears up up the auto loan question, let's go ahead and jump into the mortgage math. I'm going to use Francisco's case study who had a note on it that he was specifically curious about the mortgage. His mortgage is currently at $419,000 at 6.5% and his payment is $2,660. His cash flow is $356. If he does the debt snowball, and it's not really the debt snowball, just putting his extra cash flow toward the mortgage, he, he would pay it off in just over 21 years and he would pay $360,000 in interest versus $524,000. So saves $164,000 of interest than if you were just to pay the mortgage as usual. So that's our baseline. That's what we're trying to beat with velocity banking. And compared to the car, we do have fewer options because we can't do a first lien HELOC. A first lien HELOC at $400,000 would completely destroy his cash flow. He literally wouldn't be able to afford the interest, which is why amortized loans exist. So we'll have to run the numbers with chunking instead. And by now y'all already know how I feel about chunking, but here we go. His cash flow is not very big. So let's start with $5,000 at 10% because it's going to take him a while to pay off that $5,000, probably about one chunk per year. He might be able to fit two $5,000 chunks in one year, just depending on how the chunks fall. So even with parking his paycheck, even with keeping his average daily balance low on the 5k chunk, even with using the 5k chunk as the payment for his mortgage, even with a decently high mortgage interest rate at 6.5%, Velocity banking is still so dead even with the debt snowball. You can cut every corner and you're still going to end up neck and neck with the debt snowball. And you might be thinking, try a different chunk amount. Try $10,000, try $20,000. And I have, trust me, I have. If there was a way to pay off low interest debt faster than the debt snowball, trust me, I would have found it. I invest in real estate. Low interest debt is all I got. If there was a shortcut to pay off low interest debt faster, I would have found it. But velocity banking is not faster. Here's why using a different chunking amount is still going to get you the same result. Look at the comparisons here. Every time you make a chunk payment, the velocity banking method calculator jumps ahead. If I were using a larger chunk, this would be even more dramatic. The problem is you now have to pay off the chunk amount with your cash flow in between chunk transfers. And then in between chunk payments to the mortgage, you're paying the full amount amount of interest on the mortgage. That's why this doesn't work faster. When the chunks are deposited, the velocity banking method jumps ahead, but then as you pay off that line of credit, the debt snowball slowly catches back up and then you just rinse and repeat. Velocity banking never pulls away from the debt snowball because while you're making those chunk payments, the debt snowball balance is just a steady decline where the velocity banking is like a little bit more stair step. But they're still gonna be neck and neck with each other. So here's another calculator, and you can actually download this one from Vertex for free. They have a lot of great Excel calculators. It's very user-friendly. You can run the numbers for yourself. You can see your own numbers in this calculator and see exactly what I'm talking about. I was probably a little bit more conservative on the interest that the line of credit is going to owe. Remember, it is an average daily balance, so we can't know for sure what that number is going to be. But you can still see on this calculator that the debt snowball and velocity banking are almost identical. Francisco, I want to show you one more thing as an alternative to velocity banking and as an alternative to putting all of your cash flow toward your mortgage for the next 20 years, which I think sounds 
terrible. This is what we did to pay off our mortgage. In about four years, we went absolutely ham on our mortgage for a relatively short amount of time. And I'm going to demonstrate this with your numbers. When you put your money toward your mortgage, it's not all equal. It matters at what point in the mortgage you put your money toward the balance. Let's compare putting $10,000 toward the mortgage at the beginning of the loan versus putting $10,000 toward the mortgage at the end of the loan. If you worked extra for 10 months or started a side hustle or whatever, and you put $1,000 each month toward your mortgage principal, you would save $51,847 in interest and two years off the back of your loan. That's a pretty good return on investment. You put in $10,000 and you saved over $51,000. Now, let's say you put in $10,000 at the very end of your mortgage. Let's say you get motivated, you almost got your house paid off, and you put in $1,000 each month at the very end of your mortgage. By doing that, you save a whopping $389 of interest and three months of payments. Spending $10,000 to save $389 is terrible return on investment. In both situations, it's the same $10,000, but when you put it toward the mortgage really matters. Most likely, you would be much better off investing or saving that $10,000 rather than putting it toward your mortgage at the very end. Keep in mind, it's very similar math for a car loan. It's just so much more dramatic for a house because it's a 30-year loan. You're paying mostly interest for the first two-thirds of that loan, which is a long time. So when I got the crazy idea to pay off our house, I understood that the payments made toward the mortgage at the beginning of the loan were actually so much more valuable than the extra payments made toward the end. It's much harder because having $10,000 just disappear is not fun. You want to see those results right away. That's a lot of money, but you don't. You have to wait until the very end of the loan to really feel those results, and that's why a lot of people don't do it. It requires an insane amount of delayed gratification in order to pay off your house. And it's not even always the best financial move to do. It really depends on your goals and what you want to do in the future. We really wanted to lower our risk when it came to investing in real estate. And we also wanted to lower our monthly expenses with me staying home. My goals and aspirations might be totally different from yours. So it may not be the right thing for you to do. If you want to pay off your house fast, those early payments give you the most bang for your budget financially, it's just so hard to wait and see the results of your labor. Whatever you do, do not use Velocity Banking to pay off your car or your house when you run the numbers. It just doesn't make sense.